Hey everybody, here's a little story time vlog type of video thing. I'm gonna tell you about something that I kind of consider a big part of my life, something that I think about a lot, but I've never told you guys about in a video, so I figured it's time to do it now. This is something that happened in uh, 2010 and 2011, and Business Insider, the website, mentioned me doing this. They, they give a short version, so here's the TLDR version. Then I'll give you a longer version later. Taking a stand on student loans. The rising amount of student loans gets plenty of press, but for Jonathan Hartchick, 23, that's when I uh, told them about this, I was 23, uh, it took on a far greater meaning. During his senior year of college, he lived at the university's campus, but didn't pay for a dorm room. <laughs> Thanks to a massive amount of student loan debt and a refusal to rack up more, Hartchick spent an entire year sleeping in computer labs and libraries and many other places on campus while storing his clothes and books at the university gym lockers. Yes, he maintained his hygiene at the school's gym. Throughout the year, he never got caught or was questioned by anyone. While this certainly may be an extreme way to save, it may be a case of crazy like a fox. He says that the end result was a savings of around $6,000, as well as earning grades that were higher than any of his previous school years. He graduated in spring of 2011 and says that thanks to his crazy money move, he has already paid off his student loan debt. So that article was kind of like the short version of what happened. Here's the longer version with more information and more details. And that article was also kind of the only like evidence I have that I really did this. I have some friends who witnessed me doing this over the year and they could verify that I did it, I guess. But other than that, you kind of just have to take me on my word that I really did this and this really happened. So from 2007 until 2011, I went to Robert Morris University and I studied television production. Robert Morris is on the far west side of Pittsburgh. Right now I live on the far east side, so it's kind of just on the opposite side of town. By bus, it takes almost an hour and a half to get there by bus. I studied television production. My first year there, I was just a normal student. I lived in a dorm room. I had one roommate the first semester, another roommate the next semester. My second year and my third year at Robert Morris, I was an RA. An RA is a resident assistant. They get free housing and a free dorm but they're in charge of making sure the other students don't break the rules, don't break the law, making sure the other students get along. RAs have to set up activities, just make sure you know everyone's following the rules. And if they find another student breaking a rule, like drinking underage or drinking pot or smoking pot or whatever, they have to write up an incident report and um, report that it happened. So I did that my second and third year. My fourth year at Robert Morris, um, I was not hired back to be an RA. I think it's because I had too few incident reports. Like, I just was not strict enough. I kind of gave people warnings too much and just was not um, as strict as some of the RA other RAs were. And a few other RAs were not hired back also. It wasn't just me. I was in so much student loan debt. I, ha I graduated with about a little bit over $80,000 in student loan debt. I just paid for college almost entirely out of my own pocket with with loans and debt. Another reason I ended up doing this is because I was kind of playing chicken with my parents at the time. My parents do pretty well financially. Like we had a hot tub and a speedboat and like went vacations as kids. Like they do pretty well. And they didn't pay for any of my college though. Um like they paid for my textbooks the first semester of the first year. Other than that, they didn't pay for any part of my college. And so I was kind of hoping that once I told them I was going to be like sort of homeless for a whole year that they would like offer to pay for the dorm room. But, you know, they didn't though at the end. So I ended up just doing the homeless thing. I was, you know, getting used to not paying for a dorm room as an RA. And I kind of assumed I was going to be an RA the last year, but I wasn't. So I just, just thinking of ways to not have to pay for a dorm room again. And I thought back to something that happened my uh, second year of college. My friend Azari and I would always do these little bets with each other. And my second year of college, one of the bets was that he bet me that I couldn't go two days without my dorm room. So I took on the bet, I gave him my keys, and I lived on campus my second year of college for two days just and I just slept on couches and slept in um you know the library and slept in, in the the dorm room lobby and it was actually really easy 
I thought it was really easy. So when I was getting ready for my fourth year of college, I thought back to that bet that I did with my friend Nazari. And I remembered how easy it was to go two days just living without a dorm room. And I decided to do the entire year at university living on campus, but without a dorm room. The way I did this was, like the article says, I stored a lot of my uh, belongings in the university's gym and I showered at the gym. And I, like I said, I slept in libraries. I slept in uh, this computer lab. Th this whole thing wouldn't have been even possible the previous three years because they didn't have a 24 hour computer lab, but the timing just worked out perfectly because right before my fourth year of university, they opened up a 24 hour computer lab with a couch. So most of the nights was in this 24 hour computer lab that had a couch. I just slept on the couch. I was in Jefferson Center on campus. I also slept on a baseball field, you know, where the players um, sit on this bench. There was a nice area there to sleep. Um, one time I just slept in the woods. <laughs> um, I, I was there for television production. So they had this big TV studio with different sets. And a lot of the TV studio sets involved couches. So a lot of the time I slept on couches like behind the uh, the curtain. There was a big curtain going around the whole studio. When I was behind the curtain, it was almost completely dark and I was able to lay on a couch. And I just slept in a bunch of weird places and um, had kind of slight insomnia that year where it was like you, you lay back on a couch, you get like an hour of sleep and then you're up again and then you sleep on a different couch for an hour and then you're up for an hour. And um, it just worked out for a whole year. Uh, the article says I was never questioned. That's sort of true. There was one time I was questioned by a, a public safety officer on campus. It's because I opened a door to like an electrical room and I was considering sleeping in there. But he saw me and just asked me what I was doing. But other than that, I, I just I just lied to the public safety guy and said, um, just I, I don't know. And I, I had a student ID, so I just showed him my student ID and he's like, don't go in there. So I, I didn't go in there, but other than that, I was never questioned the whole year. You know, I, I, I was on campus for three years, so I kind of knew the timing of everything. I knew when public safety made their rounds, especially as an RA, we were um, very closely tied and we, we know the public safety's schedule as RAs. We know when they make their rounds, when they're shutting down buildings, we know everyone's schedule. So since it was my fourth year there, I kind of knew what was going on around campus and just knew how to get around without getting caught. I also <laughs> had this other bag full of like snacks. And um, in one of the centers, I hid a bag of snacks and supplies in the ceiling tiles. <laughs> Luckily, I was never caught going in and out of the ceiling tile to get my bag, because if I had been, that would have been so suspicious. Like someone would have thought that was like a bomb or something. It was just a bag full of like, like snacks and like notebooks and stuff. <laughs> um, but I was never caught going into the ceiling tiles. I like, I would stand on the desk in an empty classroom and go up to the ceiling tile to get my bag out of the ceiling. And um, I also stored, you know, like I said, a lot of my stuff in the gym lockers. There's signs up that say, don't leave your locks on overnight. But since I had been a student there so long, I knew that they never, they never followed up on that. They never cut off locks. So I knew I was fine just leaving my uh, stuff in lockers overnight. Sometimes I would switch it from one locker to another, but I would just always have a locker with a lock on it to store my stuff in. I kept a couple um, changes of clothes, some shampoo, um, you know, books, and the lockers were right next to gym showers. So I was welcome to just take a shower whenever I want. I probably took more showers that year than the previous three years because I had so much free time. When you live on college and you have a dorm room, at least for me, I would spend a lot of the day just on the computer, wasting time, playing video games, watching TV, just doing stupid stuff, wasting time in a dorm room. But when you're homeless, you're kind of forced to find ways to be productive. I spent a lot of that time in the university's gym, just working out. Like I was in pretty good shape that year just because I had so much uh, time to kill. And I was in the gym already so much uh, to get my stuff and the computer lab was on the floor below the gym 
So I was just in this Jefferson building on campus so much that um, I just I was in pretty good shape that year compared to how I, nor how I normally am. Also, out of all four years of college, that fourth year I had better grades than any other year because I had less distractions and I just had so much free time to focus on actually getting work done. And this year was even really productive because I learned how to make iPhone apps that year, which 2012 for me entirely revolved around making iPhone apps. That's how I was able to pay off my debt because I learned how to make iPhone apps from this fourth year when I was living on campus for free. Overall, it was pretty productive. Um, like I was kind of like worried the whole year that I was gonna get caught, but at the end, it just all worked out. When I first started this year, it was kind of embarrassing just sleeping in public places sometimes, but it's college though. Like people do this all the time. A lot of the times people have hours in between classes and they just fall asleep in public. Like it's not that uncommon. So it didn't even seem weird in a lot of the cases. And um, a lot of the time people were up at 3 a.m. in the computer lab studying, you know, 3, 4, or 5 a.m. just studying for a test or something. So I always knew in the back of my mind, if anybody woke me up and questioned me, I always had my backpack with me with, with books in it and stuff. I could always just tell them, hey, I'm just studying late. I'm just... Um, working on a book report or something. I'm studying for some exam. There was one kind of awkward moment where I was just telling you guys how I was sleeping on a couch behind a curtain in a TV studio. Well, that TV studio also doubled as a classroom. They, they held a class in the TV studio. So <laughs> one night I was um, asleep on the couch and I woke up and I heard a class starting in the TV studio when I was sleeping on the couch behind the curtain. And so luckily there was an emergency exit. <laughs> so I just grabbed my backpack, put on my shoes and just walked out uh, the emergency exit. And I guess, I don't know, they didn't come after me. They didn't care. I, I, got, I was fine, I guess. Um, so that was kind of awkward, but wasn't really a problem. Like I said, I don't really have any solid proof that I did this at all, but I do have a bunch of selfies of me from that year. There used to be this website called dailybooth.com and the idea is you take a selfie of yourself every day and you just post it to this website. That website was shut down, but I saved a bunch of the selfies that I took for it. There's a bunch of them where you can see the um, back of the computer lab behind me and just other lobbies and lounges that I'm sitting in trying to fall asleep in. And just pictures of me looking pretty tired. Kind of the only documentation I have of the, the whole year. It was like a big part of my life and I document a ton of my life. So it's weird that I didn't really try to make a video out of it at the time or something, but I was just focused on like getting by. And this is also the same year where I did that, uh, John counts to a hundred thousand video. So you can see, you know, a lot of the university in the background of that video. Sometimes I tell people that I did this and I'm surprised that nobody really cares. Like, no, nobody says like that's cool or that's impressive or nobody really seems to have any follow-up questions if somebody else told me they did this i would be super fascinated and have like a ton of questions about it but whenever i tell people about it nobody seems to really care and whenever i used to tell people about it i would tell them that i was homeless for a year but i've stopped describing it that way because the truth is i was not really homeless a guy that used to live next door to me his name is al uh, he passed away last year, but anyway, before he moved in next door, he really was homeless and I used to talk to him on the front porch all the time and he would tell me stories about being homeless. And after I started hearing his stories of what it's really like to be homeless, I stopped describing this year to people as me being homeless because the truth is I was not, I was not really homeless. I, I was just sleeping on you know, a college campus, I was doing like pretend homeless and not really, not really homeless. I always had money to buy food. I always had, I had money to get a hotel room if I wanted to. I just didn't. Um, I had a cell phone. I could have just called my parents and had them come pick me up. Actually they did. During holiday breaks, I would take the bus downtown and then stay at my parents' place for like Christmas break and, and some weekends also. So I was not really homeless and I shouldn't tell people that I was because it's kind of like 
dis, uh, disrespectful to people who really were homeless and really are homeless um, because it's not really comparable but it's the closest experience I've had to being homeless um, and also I had friends who told me uh, like friends that lived on campus and told me that if I were, if there was ever an emergency I could just stay with them thankfully there never was an emergency and I never had to take them up on that offer but Home, like real homeless people don't have that offer to them all the time. They don't always have a place they can go, but I always did. I, I was never in really any danger. So, uh, it's not fair of me to say I was really homeless. Anyway, that's my story of being sort of homeless. It's something that I think about a lot and have a lot of memories of. And, uh, that year kind of makes me more appreciative of what I have now. Some people say, oh, you're just in a, like a junkie basement bedroom yeah but it's better than sleeping on a couch in a computer lab so it just makes me more appreciative of what i do have and um yeah let's uh, drink some water if any of you guys are in college and uh trying to save money i would i don't know i would not recommend doing it but yeah, just think about it. Maybe um maybe do a van life or something. Maybe like rent a van and sleep in the back of a van. That was something else I considered doing. Cheers. Yeah, anyway. Rest in peace, Al. He um he's gone.